talking about storytelling and actually I blame you Peter this is your fault you are the person who got us to this sofa telling stories because you started me telling stories and you started storytelling in Cambridge that's not entirely true Mary, <laughs> because you had been telling stories I know to reception age children for many years what I helped you do I'm proud to say, was to go public and to tell to adults, which you now do with uh, great success. And oral storytelling, people quite often don't quite understand how different it is from the written word. It, no. it, you, can't, you can't say things the way you'd write them, and you can't write them the way you say them. It's a very different beast. That's right. And they, Every time you and I tell a story, we're using our voice in a way that perhaps we haven't done before. Yes, a story's different every time you tell it, isn't it? Yes, you never know exactly what words are going to come out or mm. what they're going to sound like. Yes. So there's that element of risk and excitement about it. And the audience feels this. They know that this is being recreated specially for them on yes. this unique occasion. Um, but yes, I got interested in Africa in storytelling and what role it plays in uh, the lives of different communities. Uh, but it was going to a two-week uh, symposium in Sussex where I really caught the bug and I, and I just met people I, I wanted to be with. I thought they were making their fun. They didn't need to have any money. They didn't need to have anything. They could just make their own entertainment and entertain other people and have a great time. And since then, you and I have both traveled around the country to, spoke to storytelling festivals and uh, made some very good friends and had a, a lot of fun through it. And that is a great thing about it, that it's so simple. You just need a kitchen table and a couple of people. It's all you yeah. need to tell stories. So, as, but as well as our story rounds, of course, we've uh, invited many uh, storytellers from other places, yeah. other cultures, mm. other countries to come to Cambridge. Yeah. So when you started the club, you had a, you had a room in a pub yes. and lots of people turned up, yeah. um, which I'm still envious of. Um, how, how did people, how had people heard about storytelling? Because nowadays still people say, storytelling, what's that? Yeah. How, how did you get this interest in storytelling? Well, it's quite amazing. That first time we got about 40 people just by emailing and uh, sending out little leaflets and mm. things. And did then you? those people said, look, we want to do this. We're not going to just listen to you all the time. We want to participate. And so we were away yeah. over the years. Have we had a hundred um, visiting oh storytellers? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, amazing must've... people. Yeah, you did it for ten years? Yes. You took over from me, to my great relief, um, because uh, I, I don't want to be organising anything these days. Organising is uh, very boring, isn't it? <laughs> we have Thank to... goodness we have people like you who are prepared to do it. You have to really enjoy storytelling to do all this organising. <laughs> Oh, I used to enjoy it, but that I'm getting too old now. Bits of it I love. I, yes. I don't do it as slickly as you, but I love it. I love getting storytellers in. And, and these it. people came to stay, and, yes. and we've, both, we've both put people up. And so it's the, the conversations at breakfast uh, the following yes. day. It's been fantastic, some amazing people we've, we've had. So after I took over from you, and we'd done this wonderful festival, we put so much energy into the festival that actually we, we didn't build up the club and we got very low on numbers. But it's really changing and we've got some brilliant storytellers involved at the moment. Good, which is, yeah. And we have, every month we have in CB2 Cafe, we take over the big round table and we just have a story round round the table and yeah. anyone can come along and share a story and it's very informal and friendly. In that nice upstairs room. Yes, yeah. it's a bit like sitting in someone's kitchen yeah. really and it's very safe and it means anyone can come and try out a story and you can take a few risks and people are very accepting and welcoming so it's a really good training. So sort of facing each other round a table is a quite different spatial relationship from standing up on a stage and addressing them. Exactly, yeah. yes, yes. And perhaps a, a more 
well, a very old and um, venerable way of telling stories too. Yes, it's got that feel to it, yeah. yes. And then we have the invited tellers, and we've had such good tellers. Yeah. And new people emerging all the time. Yes. <clears throat> And I've found, I've done quite a lot of teaching of people to, to storytell, people who have thought they couldn't do it or have never done it before. Well, uh, I, that's how I started, coming to one of your courses. I still remember it, down in the basement at CB2. And I've always found that if people want to learn to tell a story, they can do it. Whether they will then have the courage and or audacity to stand up on a public stage and do it is another step. Or the interest. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's lots of different ways of telling stories. There's yeah. two people sitting in a room together or at a bus stop, or there's a group in a pub uh, all the way to a big stage. And everybody can learn to do it. Yes. Many yeah. people think they can't, but they're, they're wrong. I had a big argument with um, one of the Cambridge storytellers. I said, everyone's got a story. And he said, no, nope, not my friend Paul. <laughs> My friend Paul has no stories. <laughs> I couldn't shift it. No. <laughs> but I still think that everybody's got a story oh, yeah. and everyone wants a voice to tell it with. Yeah.